it's interesting. Um, there's one macro debate and there's one micro debate. That's what I'm seeing here in Davos. So uh, the macro debate seems to be a bit more negative than the micro debate. So when I talk to a lot of my colleagues, they're all surprised by they're doing better than they thought. And actually, this is the case for many of the people in developing markets, developed markets. So listen, there is going to be a uh, difficult 23, uh, a lot of unexpected things. That, that's something that we've learned in the last few years. It's something we need to expect for the unexpected. But I'm seeing more optimism that I, that I, was, that I had before coming here to Davos. So the consumer is, you know, there's little unemployment. When you look around the world, there's low unemployment. Uh, that to me is a very positive. What I'm seeing, we're having good harvests across the world that would also have a positive impact in the economies we're seeing china opening to me that's a positive as well so i think we will see we'll start the year with some um, kind of degrees of gray but i'm seeing optimism in a lot of the people i'm talking to any big distinction in terms of the health of the consumer between u.s and europe your two big markets Probably uh, the European consumer is feeling more the cost of living adjustment than the, uh, the U.S. consumer. Um, the good news in Europe, though, is that energy prices have gone down as well. So we're seeing some uh, consumer optimism around energy go prices going down. There is obviously the big impact of the war, that they're closer to, uh, to the war in, in, uh, in Europe than we are in the U.S. But I would say the unemployment levels is the, 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 uh, the KPI I'm looking at every single country. And in the US, it's at all time lows. Yeah. Even countries like where I come from, Spain, historically very high unemployment levels, and it's, it's a very low levels today, right? So to me, and especially for our categories, which are mainstream categories that are bought by everybody around the world, unemployment is a critical factor. And so far, unemployment is As long is as it's not, low. It's, it's, it's very low. People have jobs. People have actually multiple jobs. Um, and they're, they're strategizing around their budget, so they're making choices where mm -hmm. to buy, what to buy. Those are, those are realities that we're seeing in our categories, but they continue to be resilient. We're seeing growth in our categories. We're seeing consumers stay engaged with our brands. That, that's all positive. Well, you're also pretty defensive. Even in times of downturn, people need to eat and drink. How, how, how do you characterize your portfolio? In, in that way as we yeah. head into what could be a more difficult period. Yeah, historically, uh, our categories have been resilient throughout positive economic times, negative economic times. Uh, there are different reasons why that happens. Consumers make adjustments. They socialize more at home. We're normally preferred in that occasion. Um, so people look for uh, kind of affordable treats. Yeah. So we're part of that. So we're seeing positives in that, in that, in that change. Um, we, we feel we feel good about about how uh, um, our categories will, you know, will behave. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of knowledge how to make our brands affordable in difficult times. So give consumers entry points and ways of continue to be engaged with our brands in spite of of their their tighter budgets. Affordable, maybe, but definitely less affordable than they've been. You you have been seeing double digit price increases. Is that still happening? It, it, it will not happen, obviously. I mean, the, the, the way we... It will come down. It, the way we approach the, uh, the inflation was very clear. We wanted to put consumers at the center of any decision that we're making. We wanted to lean with efficiency and cost control. So that was our first go-to. Uh, I think our productivity was very strong this year. It, was, it will continue to be very strong. Uh, and then obviously we had to price, the way we price it was always having consumers at the center, giving them affordable ways to stay with our brands. On the pricing story, we're all trying to figure out what's happening with inflation. And, and food inflation has been stubbornly high in particular. So what, what is the outlook yeah. there? Uh, listen, I've been talking to some of the big, uh, you know, uh, agro companies in the, uh, in, in the market. There are good news in the sense that crops are much better than they were last year. So I think we should we will see better performance of the pricing. So commodity input costs Commodity cost input costs should go down. Uh, oil prices are kind of stabilizing at, at the levels. So we should see a uh, decrease in, in commodity cost. Now, the labor market is still hot, right? The labor market, and, and that's 
what I was referring to yeah. earlier that gives me optimism because wages keep going up and unemployment and employment is very high. So uh, probably labor is going to be the uh, biggest source of inflation versus commodities probably going down. We still see bottlenecks on transportation. Some, some, you know, some key elements of the full supply chain still might have some inflationary um, uh, trends, but it, uh, especially commodities, which were a big part of the uh, of the inflation in the past, are, are calming, are going down, which is good, you know, good news for the consumer in general. It's good news for our for our.